today we're going to talk about another crazy lens filter system from Freewell. It is the new Iger matte box system. It has a very nice fit and finish to it and it doesn't cost as much as some cinema matte boxes. We have a nice carbon fiber hood. On the inside here it takes slide-in filter sets as well as magnetic inserts. You can just grab with your fingernails and pull out. So right now, the insert I have on here is the Glow Mist. You can also get an ND filter in there and a few other things because Freewell really likes accessorizing and customizing. We have our one to five stop ND filter in here, which can be converted just by putting a different filter medium on the front to a higher density or just as a CPL. A geared knob on the back here that lets you rotate the back panel, which if you just have that in, you're only rotating the CPL. But if you put this in, we are rotating, as you can see, the density of this ND. Magnets, I love them. I'll slide this in here and lock it. And the back here, we have easy clips to attach it to the lens. The system comes with multiple lens mounts. This one I'm using on a 77 millimeter thread. And so from the back here as a camera operator, I can quickly and easily, oh, it feels nice, adjust the ND. Matte box comes off very easily as well, if you don't want to have that on, or if you want to break it down for travel. Loop. Just like that. Now it's time to look at image quality more closely. Here we're comparing on the Sony 16 to 35G Master at 16 millimeters at f/5/6, where we get the most flaring. The Iger matte box variable set to max, so we'll get our worst quality possible. Versus a fixed five-stop ND that is has the same amount of effect and we have a fixed daylight white balance so everything is set here to be equal and as you can see our Iger variable ND without the mist does have a bit more flaring a bit more bloom it is a pretty nice look overall but the colors aren't shifting and we aren't seeing any weirdness here and now we're going to add our mist filter to this at minimum VND and at maximum so at one stop and five stop as you can see we have a lot more flaring going on we're also seeing a little bit more of the blobs showing up because we've added an extra layer to our filters honestly it looks pretty nice to me very neutral still our color cast hasn't really changed much and speaking of that let's have a closer look at our color cast and so here we have our color checker and our camera is set to fixed white balance just slid that ND in front. Our aperture is going to change as we change the occlusion level of this VND and we can watch and see if the colors change. So the only thing that should be changing is exposure which should be adapted for. So make it a little darker, our aperture is widening and as you can see we have very little color shift going on here. And then next, we will slap on the mist filter, see if that has much effect on it. Again, our white balance is still going to be locked. And you can see we have just a little bit of lifting in the blacks. Our sharpness still looks pretty good. Not quite as crispy as before, but our colors don't really seem to have changed all that much. Let's move on to our ups and downs and see if I have any gripes or nitpicks on this matte box. First of all, my only major gripe with this, and this is exceedingly common with all of these matte box systems, there's just one little lever here that doesn't feel phenomenal, that controls the angle of our hood here, and then there's no hinge here. Most of them do this to save weight and packaging. So it just rests on a point right here. I wish that they would do a more robust design, but they were just mostly following what is kind of normal in the industry for that. So the front, the matte box portion, is designed to be as light as possible with plastics and carbon fiber. And the back here is very nice machined aluminum. And as with previous Freewell products, everything fits together very nicely. So 
So as you can see, this is giving us very high quality compared to a normal variable neutral density filter, but not quite as high as a fixed neutral density filter, even when compared against Freewall's other offerings. They do do very well because the variable element is much larger than the maximum element size of a lens attaching it to. So this only goes up to 82 millimeters. We still have a lot of room to breathe around here. By having that room to breathe, it allows us to avoid a lot of the X pattern and also having hard stops at the beginning and the end of the variable section, it also allows us to avoid having a hard X pattern on this. We have a lot of stuff going on inside here, so we end up with a fair distance between the front element and the front element of the lens, which gives more room for light to bounce around. Thankfully, it's pretty good at rejecting that. We do get a little bit of Blobosaurus going on in here. The closer you can get your filter to your lens's front element, the less of that you're likely to have. Now, all things being equal, different coatings can give you different performance. Let me know if you, if you have any questions about this, the Freewell Iger system. I love how Freewell is always trying to come up with something new, something innovative. I enjoy innovation. So, until next time, take some photos and take some videos.